when it comes to your kitchen, organizing your pantry is vital in supporting your lifestyle. No matter what dietary restrictions you have, food allergies, how you cook, when you cook, it's there to support you so that it's easier for you to cook, you know what's in there, and it helps you have the healthy lifestyle that you want. Hi, I'm Simply Sherry, and I help you have less stress and more peace so you can create a home you love. In this video, I'm gonna show you three easy tips on how to organize your pantry so that you love it. So this is my walk-in pantry, and my kitchen is over here. There's a playlist on different ways I've organized uh, different areas in my kitchen if you wanna watch that. So we're gonna to go to my walk-in pantry and show you a little bit of how I've organized it, but more importantly, how you can organize the space that you have. My first tip is work with what you have. Not look at my walk-in pantry and say, oh, I wish I had a walk-in pantry. Or me looking at another home and saying, oh, I wish I had a butler pantry. If you only have a cabinet or one area in your uh, kitchen, then that's what you work with. If you just have a shelf, if you have a wall of shelves, if you have open shelving, if you have a, um, a bifold door uh, and you know just some shelves, then that's what you need to work with. So that's my first tip is work with what you have. Live in your reality self, not your fantasy self. Now, don't get me wrong, I do appreciate my walk-in pantry and I love the space that it provides. It's been perfect. I don't ask for more. I do have a prepper pantry and then I have another prepper pantry because I do prep and those will be other videos. I do have videos on prepping here on my channel. You can watch that, but this is my main pantry and I'm just going to show you an overview. Of course, when you open it up, you might think, oh, that's, you know, of course she'd have an organized pantry because look at all the space that she has. Well, no, that's not true. There's a lot of spaces, there's a lot of areas um, in people's homes where there's a lot of space, but it's not organized. First, you have to work with what you have. And so for me, this is the space that I have and this is what I work with. You know, I can totally relate. I've lived in homes where it was just a cabinet when we didn't even have a cabinet when I had to put shelves. You know, I've learned to work with what I have and I know you can too. My second tip is to begin with the end in mind. You hear that all the time in different aspects of life, but with organization, that is one of the things that I do teach. You have to begin with the end in mind. So for me, this is the space that I have, right? This is what I'm working with. Now, do I want most of my pantry to be supporting uh, baking endeavors, right? Or do I want it where it's really half of a prepper pantry or mainly a prepper pantry where I put a lot of back stock and canned goods? Or is it where the things that I want to cook for the week, there's a section for that? Or do I like to not go to the store? So I wanna have a lot of uh, duplicates or back stock. Do uh, we eat a lot of breakfast and do we like cereal and oatmeal and things that will support uh, that type of eating? So for you, ask yourself, do you guys like to eat breakfast? Do you like making breakfast, even if it's on the weekends and having those big hearty breakfasts? Or if you don't, then you're not gonna uh, create a space in your pantry or organize it necessarily for breakfast. Do you have to have an area where kids, your kids can go to for like after school snacks? They know they can go to that bin and grab anything from there for their after school snack. That supports you in what you need. That is thinking, that is beginning with the end in mind. So I cook a lot of Asian food and what I'd like to do is to have a lot of stock of let's say noodles, sauces, here's some Filipino stuff more sauces, and then we go to Costco, so I have oil and vinegar, and then we have rice. Right now I have the noodles overflowing, and I do need to get a new bag of rice. So when I buy rice, it's like a 25 pound bag, and I do have some in my prepper pantry. So our Asian store is about a half hour drive. So to go to the Asian store is a half hour, half hour, that's an hour, it takes me about an hour to shop, and so that's two hours of the day. That's without traffic. So for me, I like to back stock. I like to get two at a time for, you know, one is none, two is one. So I like to 
uh, organize my pantry for that. So if you have a store that you like to go to, you might want to have uh, organize your pantry so that it can hold a couple more pieces or it can have that back stock, right? Or maybe there's a, a certain item that always seems to be out of stock. So when it's in stock, you may want to have a few more of that. So those are ways that you can think about your pantry is with having the end in mind. Are there things that you like to always have at the ready where you can't necessarily just run down the street to your local grocery store and grab it? Are there certain canned goods that you look through, uh, you, you follow throughout the year to make sure you get them when they're at a good price? Do you can? Do you like to put things in mason jars? Do you like to decant and put them into containers like these OXO ones, okay? Do you like to bake? Like my daughter here, we have always set up an area for her to bake. And my husband, he loves peanuts. So when we go to the Asian store, he likes to buy a lot of, uh, of the raw peanuts. And um, along with the baking, uh, we have this baking cart that I have a separate video for that. You can watch that. But if you have this, spa this space like this, you know, may, uh, you, maybe you don't want to block it off, this area off with the baking cart. For us, it's important to have a baking cart. So we just pull it out. It's just, it takes less than 10 seconds, probably only five seconds, and I can grab whatever is in there. But when I organize this, they're, they're the things that I don't need access to all the time. And so uh, let's say like a, a chocolate for molding um, candy molds when she uh, bakes things like that. I think I have the juicer back there and then maybe marshmallows for the few times that we make Rice Krispie treats. But you can have something like this, not necessarily for baking, but this could be like your treats cart, right? So if you're, uh, you reward your kids or you treat yourself or your spouse, whatever, this can be your treats cart. So this is the only time you go here only for those times when you wanna have a treat. Or maybe it's your movie night cart and you set this up with popcorn and all those things and you just pull it out when it's time for a movie night. I've also used the vertical space, if you can see that, and this is like a um, motion sensor light that just adds light at night. And also here, you could see I've used vertical space here on this wall. I used to have a shoe holder, so you don't have to get something like that. You could just get those shoe holders that are very affordable from Amazon or other big box stores. And I've definitely used the back of the door for this vertical space. Uh, other things you can think about if you're like, um, have extracurricular activities, weekend uh, track meets or gymnastics, things like that. Maybe there's a section that you organize specifically because that happens every weekend. Or maybe you have a separate um, dietary or allergy uh, needs that it can be organized that way. And then my third tip is it's okay to change it up. So I've changed this pantry around so many times. We've been here for a long time. Um, in the past couple years, this has kind of been the main setup. I think if you can look back at my channel, I, I've had a pantry organization, I think two years ago. And this is the new thing that I added. And you know, the shoe holder wasn't enough to hold the stuff that I wanted to have, especially uh, like this. These are photo holder packets sorry there let's see let's get that one and then let's get the taco and the turmeric and so these are just photo holders I forgot maybe the four by six and they hold those spice packets you know those like taco packets you get all the time chili things like that um, and they fit perfectly into those bins. Okay, that's Filipino. And then, you know, these um, packets that once you open them, you can fold them in, oops, fold them in half and put them in there. So you can see I had a whole bunch of these that were in little bins that actually fit perfectly too, but I didn't want to take up the floor space. They were, they were over here. I didn't want to take up the floor space anymore, so I decided, I saw, you know, hey, here's some vertical space. Why don't I use that? 
and it's been perfect. But my point is that I changed it up. It's okay to change it up, right? Your dietary needs change. The number of people in your household changes. Uh, their pref your preferences change. Your weekends, your extracurricular activities, your sports changes. So it's okay to change it up. But as you change it, you start to realize, you know, what's working and what's not working. The whole goal is to support your lifestyle, how you prepare food and how you eat. So those are my three tips to better organize your pantry so that you love it. One, work with the space that you have. Two, begin with the end in mind. And three, it's okay to change it up. I hope these tips are helpful. Let me know in the comments below what you're going to implement and I'll see you in the next video. If you want to see a full tour of my pantry and everything explained, a complete walkthrough, then click the next video.